Many believers are aware that Leviticus 11 prohibits eating a land animal that does not have split hooves and chews the cud. Pigs have split hooves, but they do not chew the cud. This is why pork is not kosher. Whereas a cow has split hooves, but also chews the cud. So beef is kosher. But there is more to keeping kosher than simply selecting beef instead of pork. To aid our discussion today, I'm going to be using a book by Aaron Eby called Biblically Kosher. It's a Messianic Jewish perspective on kashrut. He says on page 76, In order to keep biblically kosher, one must be mindful not only of the species of animal, but also the parts of the animal to be eaten. According to Genesis chapter 32, it became the practice of the Jewish people to not eat the part of the animal that later came to be called the sciatic nerve. In fact, Jewish commentators identified this as one of the 613 commandments of the Torah. E.B. states that completely removing this piece is a tedious surgical procedure. He goes on to say that the Torah also indicates that the fat of certain animals is not to be eaten. You can check out Leviticus chapter 3 verse 17 and Leviticus chapter 7 verses 23 to 25. On page 78, he makes an interesting point regarding not eating the fat of a land animal. He says, this would pose a problem for a literalist. How can one avoid eating any fat from an animal? All meat contains some amount of fat. At first glance, this law would preclude the possibility of eating any meat whatsoever. However, he goes on to say, Jewish interpretation sees the term for fat in the context of the sacrificial laws, referring to fat portions and layers in the animal rather than fat that is marbled into the meat. If meat is to be kosher, these fat portions must be selected out and removed. He goes on to say, the forbidden portions of animals pose an equal challenge to biblical kosher as pure and impure species. If they do not come from a kosher slaughterhouse, ground beef, sausages, and hot dogs are guaranteed to contain these forbidden portions. To put it bluntly, typical ground meats sold at the local grocery store are not biblically kosher. Furthermore, he goes on to talk about, on page 79, the Torah prohibits the consumption of blood. In Leviticus 3.17, he cites, The prohi prohibition of not eating blood is a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwelling places. One who eats blood is cut off from his people, and God sets his face against that person. So this prohibition is not simply against drinking blood. The Torah indicates that animals that are slaughtered must be properly bled before the meat is eaten. It says in Leviticus 19 verse 26, you shall not eat any flesh with the blood in it. This law was even given to Noah back in Genesis chapter 9. He says on page 80, the idea that there is a certain way that animals must be slaughtered can be found in the Torah. So how are we to slaughter an animal as God has commanded in the Torah? Apparently, the proper method of slaughter was demonstrated to the ancient Israelites. To summarize, to put it simply, if the animal did not die in the proper manner, then the animal is not kosher, regardless of whether or not the blood has been drained from the carcass. So, we should also consider, he says, the four apostolic injunctions upon Gentiles, which includes the instruction to abstain from what has been strangled. He interestingly says, while the term strangle in English specifically denotes death by constriction around the neck or windpipe, the Greek term used in the Bible has a broader definition which includes choking, suffocation, and asphyxiation, not merely strangling. So rather than dying of blood loss, as seems to be the Torah's intention, he says, the animal dies of asphyxiation, rendering it strangled. And he quotes a couple scholars that make the case that the apostolic prohibition of what has been strangled thus refers to improperly slaughtered animals. He says on page 82, although the Torah does not explicitly describe the proper method of slaughter, traditional kosher slaughter is done in such a way that the major blood vessels in the neck are cut with a sharp knife without damaging the windpipe. That way, the animal's death is almost painless and the heart continues to pump the blood out of the body until the animal falls asleep. He goes on to make the case that one cannot prove purely from biblical text that this is the only proper method of, method of slaughter, the kosher method of slaughter. Nonetheless, at the, at the very least, we can see that the method of death and the method of slaughter are significant terms of biblical kosher law. We would do well to investigate whether or not other killing and butchering method, methods meet this standard. He goes on to say that, that the USDA standard in the States uh, does not meet that standard and neither would, uh, uh, neither do can Canadian governmental health standards uh, meet that standard because otherwise all meat in 
Canada would be kosher certified, and that's certainly not the case. So, again, in Acts 15, the apostles actually mandate that Gentile believers abstain from meat that is strangled and blood. Apparently, the apostles mandated that the Gentile believers, at least those Gentile believers that were interacting with them, uh, abstain from all non-kosher meat, or to put it differently, that, that the only meat that Gentile believers could eat, at least among the Jewish people, would be meat that was slaughtered in the kosher method. He cites a church history scholar that actually found uh, evidence in early church literature that Christians in France still pur purchased kosher slaughtered meat even after the church had begun severing its ties from Judaism. So from that, we can see that as late as the end of the second century, there were still followers of Jesus who observed the strict prohibition against blood consumption and only ate kosher slaughtered meat. So blood-free meat, he says, is a real issue in our modern world. Today, most meat found in a grocery store or restaurant is slaughtered without any concern of removing all the blood. In fact, the two primary methods of killing animals in slaughterhouses, bolt stunning and electrocution, actually cause the retention of some of the animal's blood. And in fact, he says, some consider blood left in the meat a delicacy. However, by purchasing kosher certified meat, Gentiles are able to observe the prohibition of consuming blood while honoring the Jewish people who preserved this Torah practice for thousands of years. It is an opportunity for Gentiles to connect and interact with the Jewish community as they find sources of kosher meat. So I recommend that you purchase the book Biblically Kosher by Aaron Eby. It's, uh, it was published by First Fruits of Zion. So you can visit ffoz.org or go to their store website ffoz.com to purchase the book. So I encourage you to begin to buy kosher certified meat. And for locations of where you can buy kosher certified meat, please email us at contact at messianicniagara.com. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe link below or visiting youtube.com slash messianicniagara. And please visit our website at messianicniagara.com.